Hey gang, David Guffel, Thinker Farmer here. Um, just finishing an evening and uh, got the chainsaw out to cut up some uh, trees we previously cut down and pile them up in the brush. Finished with that and thought this was a really good time to go ahead and share um, some of the lessons that I learned from my mentor, Cap. In a previous video, I shared Cap's life story. I shared some famous quotes that he ins inspired me with. In this video, I, because he's, he has been such an impactful mentor in my life, I wanted to go ahead and summarize some of the big lessons that he taught me about life and farming that I use probably every day without even realizing it when I get up and go to work on the farm. So there's five of them, and with each one I want to share a thought or a, a memory So, number one, and most important, and with each one of these, it's uh, all about the value of a specific thing in life. Um, Cap was very critical or conscientious of teaching me what things actually had value. So, all of these are lessons from Cap on, and I'm going to put the word in bold, or big, so y'all can make sure you get that. Lessons from Cap on value. So number one was work ethic. From the first time that uh, Cap and I worked together in the hay fields, um, at the time I was skinny, um, I don't even think, I think I had just turned 13. He told me, David, I don't care how smart you are, your smarts will only get you so far in life and then that will leave you on a plateau. If you're going to get from here to there, wherever you need to get in life, you're going to have to work diligently. Education is worth nothing if you have no industry. And throughout the many years I worked for CAP, I was always impressed by his diligence and his ability to engage um, work ethic. Um, he could spot, Cap could spot a lazy worker from 200 yards away. He had worked hard his whole life. He knew what laziness looked like. And um, whenever he would see someone that was lazy, he would point it out to me and say, David, that is what you don't want to do with your life. If you're going to make anything of yourself, you're going to have to get after it. And second lesson, that he taught me was the value of focus or and systematic thinking or as he would say it one thing at a time there was a time then when cap and i were out in the hay fields we had probably oh 15 acres of hay on the ground cured and we were getting ready to bale it up, and we knew we had a few days of dry weather coming after it. And I said, Cap, why don't we go ahead? We've got some time before we're gonna bale. Let's go ahead and go out in the field and go to another field and cut so we're ready for the next field. And, uh, you know, we can, in other words, we'll, we'll cut some hay today, tomorrow we'll, we'll head on out there and bale, and then a couple days later we'll get it all up off the ground. And he looked at me and he said, David, We've not run the equipment in the field doing such a large amount of hay yet. If we get out there in the field with the hay equipment and we have a breakdown, not only are we going to lose everything that we already have cut and fluffed and raked, we're going to lose all of this hay that we're, we're, we're just going to cut today. And his point was, we're going to have to take one thing at a time. And this is a lesson in life that success is often not about... Um, throwing a, trying to do a whole bunch of things at one time, um, over committing ourselves and pushing ourselves as hard as we can, but it's about patiently and systematically taking things on one at a time and the ability to essentially focus on them. When you focus, magic happens, or not magic, but quite literally the difference is, is it, it, it's astronomical what you will accomplish in a day if you're engaged what you're doing. And so uh, many times 
I would have an idea, which wasn't always a bad idea, to start on another project before we'd finish something else. The cap would always remind me to finish what you start. You have to take one thing at a time to get done what you need. And uh, third lesson was the value of risk or decisiveness. So um, somebody wants to find de not decisiveness as the, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm getting my words tongue tied. Decisiveness has been defied, defined as the ability to finalize a difficult decision based on the will and ways of God. Now that's a spiritual definition, but to put that in layman's terms, that means you're able to make a wise decision and you're able to stick with it. Um, haymaking is a risky business. Um, you cut a big field of 15 acres, you really don't know for sure what the weather is going to do. You can never predict whether your equipment is going to run optimally or not. Um, but Cap was always the entrepreneuring type where if uh, he saw an opportunity to make some money and he evaluated the risk and it wasn't great and the opportunity for re reward was good, he'd go ahead and do it. One time um, he told me, David, We've got a big brush cutter. When we're not making hay, we could take on 50, 100 acres and just bush hog it, and we could get paid for that too. And I said, Cap, why we want to mess with that? That's not hay making. And uh, he said, David, why are you such a pessimist? We could make money doing that. And yes, it would be a bigger commitment for us, he said, but the only way you're going to get anywhere is by making commitments and sticking with them. In other words, there's a risk there in taking on more but if you, if you know you can handle it, or you, or you think you can, oftentimes the best thing to do is just go for it anyway. There's a bigger risk in life, Cap taught me this, in not taking risks than there is in taking risks. If you don't do anything, that's the worst possible situation. Um, kind of back to the saying earlier, do something even if it's wrong. And the same applies to you when you're starting your farm. Don't get paralysis analysis, as Joel Salzen would say. Go ahead and start doing something. Take a risk. You'll learn more that way. The next thing Cap taught me was the value of communication. So, I'll try to move over here, gang. Every morning I went to work with Cap, um, we would generally take 15 to 30 minutes, um, sit down in his house, he'd offer me coffee. I was not a coffee drinker, so I didn't drink coffee generally. I would drink water. And he would go over the day, go over the things. He'd ask me how my day was going. He would go over the list of five or 10 things he wanted done. Usually I would take notes on it. And uh, I'd go ahead and get on out there and start doing them. And at first, that seemed like a very subtle thing. And some people would say, well, why didn't he just tell you, just hand you a list, a sheet of paper, or just take one minute and quickly tell you to go do a couple of things and then come back and check on you? Because generally, he would check on me through the day. But Cap understood that if he gave me the bigger picture and the scope of what he wanted to do in the day, I would be able to get more done because I would know how to pace myself. I would understand priorities. I would know it was going to happen and I would anticipate things and my brain would be working on it. And so he always made a point of giving me the big picture, even though it took him extra time to do it. And it resulted in less uh, breakdowns in the field where I didn't know what he needed. And the one thing, other thing about communication that he instilled in me is the value of listening. He said, David, I will never get upset with you if you need me to, if you don't understand something. I'll take the time to explain it. What will frustrate me more than anything else is if you are not paying attention and listening. And um, I'm not the best listener, but every time I uh, find myself wandering, I usually think back to Cap training me to always close your mouth. When your boss is speaking, listen closely, take notes, and learn. And listening, is that's a, uh, that lesson, if you can learn to listen in life, that lesson alone is worth more than a college education. It'll put you way ahead in terms of interpersonal relationships, understanding things about life, and improving your 
relationships, whatever they are, spouse, you name it. Um, the final lesson, um, I'm going to put challenge and overcoming. Um, Cap was always one to challenge me. He never uh, let me go easy on myself. Um, if he knew I could handle it, he didn't want me to hurt myself for sure, but if he knew I could handle it, he was not going to let me um, play it easy. Um, I was a hard worker, but uh, initially when I started with Cap, I wasn't. I was kind of hesitant and uh, also a bit fearful of things that I didn't know how to do. I remember one summer, he put me in the front end loader of his bucket, jacked me up in the air about 15 feet, um, no harness, no straps, gave me an 18 inch chainsaw and told me, all right, cut the branches. And uh, I was, I didn't know that I was afraid of heights, but I'd never really been up on heights and he was moving around with the tractor. And I also wasn't really proficient at a chainsaw at the time, but uh, I got out there on the, front end loader of the bucket. Sometimes I was standing on the edge, reached up, cut the limbs, and slowly but steadily began to get better at operating a chainsaw, better at balance, and also, more importantly than anything, better at making calls and judging distances and what I could and couldn't do safely up on heights. And at first I was afraid, but after a few hours of doing it, the fear kind of wore off, and I was actually really thrilled because I learned um, that when you conquer a fear of heights or a fear, you name it, a fear of talking to someone else, a fear of sharing your ideas, a fear of failure, when you conquer your fears, it's very liberating and freeing. And in life, you're going to have to conquer your fears or your fears are gonna conquer you. And uh, man, gang, uh, thinking back to the time up in that tractor uh, front and loader bucket, it was an exhilarating experience, and I'd do it again, um, even though I'm probably 60, 70 pounds heavier and I'm top heavy now from pumping iron. But um, again, I'm just gonna summarize these lessons. These are top lessons from CAF, um, all of them dealing with the value of certain things. The value of having a work ethic, the value of being systematic and taking on one thing at a time, the value of taking risks and being decisive about them, the value of communicating with your team, listening to other people, taking the time to explain the big picture to them, and last but not least, the value of taking on challenges and overcoming, whether it's a fear, an obstacle, you name it. All right, gang, that is it for the journey. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Take care.